This month I am modifying one of my Rapido Dash 8s. Improvements to be made to the model are as follows. I am replacing the factory circuit boards with a single board with access to all eight lighting functions. I am relocating the board and the decoder from the fuel tank to the top of the motor. And then I'm going to fill the fuel tank and the empty spaces with extra weight to increase the pulling power. I am also installing new lighting, uh, that is the independently controlled number boards and also the green, white and red class lights. Uh, I'm going to fix the anti-climber, the ditch lights and the handrails that are broke earlier last month. And the last thing I'm going to do is to add the extra detail parts, the air and MU hoses and the air filter. The first thing I'm going to do here is remove the locomotive shell. Uh, I'm removing the speakers from the chassis so that I can work on desoldering the wired connections. After that, I can remove the factory circuit boards. I remove the chassis circuit board first and detach the ribbon cable. Then I remove the eight screws holding the chassis to the underframe and pull the entire chassis with the motor off the underframe. After that, I can flip the underframe over and remove the fuel tank circuit board. Since I have the chassis and fuel tank separated from the underframe at this point, I am going to start adding weight to the locomotive. I was able to fit 70 grams of Tunsum putty into the fuel tank. I used a layer of food wrap so that the putty doesn't get stuck to the fuel tank. And I also put a piece of wax paper on top so that the putty doesn't get stuck to the underframe. I also stuck 100 grams of tire weights in the open spaces of the chassis. So the weight of the locomotive is now 680 grams compared to 510 grams out of the box. So back to the deal with the circuit boards. Um, these factory circuit boards, they, they kind of suck for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is the location of the 21 pin plug and the decoder is inside the fuel tank, which means the decoder is mounted upside down in the bottom of the locomotive. This makes it very difficult and annoying to run new wires for the extra lighting functions that I'm doing. The second thing is that the factory board is originally designed for ESU's budget sound decoder, which is called the essential sound unit. That means the circuit board only has pads for four lighting functions, while the ESU Log Sound Select that Rapido finally used has eight functions in total. This is a new circuit board I'm using. This is the circuit board from a Rapido F40PH. It's small enough to fit inside the Dash 8, and it also has the pads for all eight lighting functions. I'm switching to a board that can give me all eight lighting functions because I'm going to be using seven of them. They are the two headlights, the number boards that can be switched on or off, the ditch lights, and the three independently controlled class lights. I'm going to wire the lighting functions in the following order. The front and rear headlights will still be the front and rear headlights, and they will be assigned to function zero. Auxiliary 1 will be the number boards, and they will be assigned to function 7, which means I can press function 7 to turn them on or off, and also change the brightness, instead of having them on forever, 
at full brightness on the factory locomotives. Auxiliary 2 will be the ditch lights, which you won't see in this video yet because I broke the ditch lights earlier and the replacement parts aren't here yet. Auxiliary 3, 4, and 5 will be the class lights, which will be controlled using function 10, function 11, and function 12 for now. I have sent an email to Matt Herman at ESU and asked him to release a Dash 8 sound file with the built-in one-button class light switching function, just like on the Bowser SD40-2s. He says he will have them out at some point, so when they are released, it's just a matter of loading the new sound file and the class lights can be switched by using just one button instead of three buttons. Auxiliary 6 I'm going to leave open for now. I may decide to use Auxiliary 6 for step lights if I can figure out a way to run the wires without getting them tangled inside the locomotive. Here I am just soldering all the wires back onto the new circuit board. The class light wires are especially difficult to do because the pre-wired LEDs have very tiny wires and you have to solder them two at a time. I have two LEDs on auxiliary three for the green lights, two on auxiliary four for the white lights, and two on auxiliary five for the red lights. If you don't have red or green LEDs, you can take warm white LEDs and dip them into a jar of Tamiya clear paint uh, the part number for clear green is X25, part number for clear red is X27. After all the wires are soldered, I secured a new circuit board on top of the motor with some foam tape, and then installed the speakers back into place. So yeah, that is pretty much for this video. I can't continue any further because the rest of my parts have not shown up in the mail yet. I am going to end the video by showing you how the lights work. Function 0 is the directional headlight. Function 6 are the dish lights, but my dish lights aren't installed yet, so I can't show it to you right now. Function 7 is the number boards. I have set the brightness of the number boards to 5 so that they're not super bright. Function 10 are the green class lights. Function 11 are the white class lights. Function 12 are the red class lights. I will continue with a new video once my new parts come in. See you later.